Hoover Sylvia Hotel, a well-loved part of the city's history and the scenic West End. It's now one of Vancouver's heritage buildings. It was built in 1912 by a Polish immigrant named Abraham Goldstein. It started out as an apartment building called the Sylvia Court. Goldstein named it for his daughter. Well, after dinner, we'd, he'd go for a walk, and uh, I used to tag along, I expect. And he used to stop and look at this vacant lot. And uh, after a while, I think I started asking him why he kept stopping there and looking at this, what he saw. And he said something about that he was going to build a building there. I think I was between t 10 and 12. And how old are you now, Sylvia? 192. You want to be 192. <laughs> 92, yes. Yeah. Well, at that time, he was going to build one for me, one for my brother, and one for my sister. But the war started and depression set in after, and that was the end of that. The Sylvia Court had been opened little more than a year at the outbreak of the First World War. Well, it was, it was nearly all vacant because um, nearly all the men had gone to war and uh, families uh, doubled up. It was very, very difficult to get men to operate the elevator. And one time they couldn't get anybody and uh, I was shown how to do it. And I did it for a few nights. And, uh, but there was a notice on the elevator. That the elevator would have to stop uh, service at 10.30. I wasn't allowed out after that. that was <laughs> That was something to be even allowed to be out at 10:30. On the second uh, floor, there was a man that owed his that hadn't paid his rent, and at midnight one night, he started pulling his furniture out of the window, and the police uh, saw him doing it, and arrested him or something, or asked him why he was pulling taking his furniture out in the middle of the night. He was trying to do a moonlight flit. Yeah. In those days, hardly anyone could afford the $35 a month for a small apartment in the Sylvia Court. So, in 1923, Abraham Goldstein and his wife were forced to sell. The stock market crash in 1929 and the depression that followed meant more financial trouble for the Sylvia. In the early 30s, uh, the hotel was not, the, the apartment building was not doing well. And they decided that the way to go would be to start renting it as an apartment hotel. Uh, some of the street would be rented on a weekly or daily basis. In 1936, the Sylvia Court was renamed the Sylvia Hotel. It was the tallest building in Vancouver, so its restaurant on the eighth floor was called Dine in the Sky. Through the 40s, more of its suites became residential hotel rooms. In 1954, the Sylvia opened its cocktail bar, the first licensed lounge in Vancouver. The hotel had changed hands twice more by then. In 1961, it was bought by its current owner. The hotel can no longer boast of being the tallest building in Vancouver, but it has other things going for it. Good afternoon, the Sylvia Hotel. Can I help you? Over the years, the clientele has been very loyal. We are starting to, to hit uh, the second generation of, of the same clientele, uh, where the parents used to come, now the children are coming. And the children are coming with their babies or little children. Uh, some young people telling us that uh, their grandparents came here uh, on their honeymoon. They always come with something that makes every day a little bit more of history of the Sylvia Hotel. You walk in the Sylvia and you wonder who is going to be sitting at in the in the lounge, the, the table beside you. And you wonder who you get to meet. Mrs. Obivet, it's nice Most, to meet you. Welcome oh, to so the Sylvia. To Thank you. Yes, I'm going to introduce you. This is Mrs. Croson. I'm glad, and glad to Ms. know Baum, you. And this is Mrs. Baum, Mrs. Abovitz, the you original did? Sylvia lady from the Sylvia Hotel. Wonderful to meet you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, it's nice you. to be here. <laughs> here we go. I can remember many pleasant dinners up above in the dining room. 
We came on special occasions for Christmas and Easter. Oh, that and was birthdays. Mm -hmm. and I was only up there once that I can remember. And it was such a wonderful view. Yeah, it was always beautifully done. The tables had the white tablecloth down to the floor, the corners. Oh. <laughs> and it was really nice. Everything was really nice, I'll tell you. While I was here, the rates were in line with the people and children was no bother. You can bring the kids and the pets and the dogs and, the dogs and everything. This used to be home. When the people come in, they used to say, well, I'm home now. Could I have the same room? Well, they still do that, don't they? Yeah. They come from England every year, every the same year. people. They tell us more well, about it. Yes. Uh -huh. Well, I don't think I can tell you anymore. I think you've told me a lot that I don't <laughs> know. And it's been very interesting. It was very nice when the dining room was upstairs. But you knew right away it would know. wouldn't pay. They would come in for a cup of coffee and sit all afternoon at, for the view. <laughs> it's a million dollar view. Yeah. The highlight of my summer would be to come here for a Sunday dinner or come at, after Easter service at church and come for lunch. You dine in the sky. And you dressed up in your very best. Oh. You didn't wear your giant jeans. Well, and it used to be. Uh, you didn't get any oh, yeah. shorts on. Or ladies with pants. Yeah. That was a no-no. What do you think your father would say if he could see oh. see the Sylvia today? I think he'd be very, very surprised and very pleased. We have a lot to thank him for, haven't we? All of us, yes, for having this lovely place.